Hi, my name is Dan. Today we're going to talk about the simplifying history of the Michigan Basin. Now, what is Michigan Basin, you might ask? Well, it is where the state of Michigan resides on top of, as well as parts of Wisconsin, uh, Canada, Ohio, Indiana, basically this whole surrounding area. Um, a sedimentary basin are regions of the Earth's crust that have created a commendation space that has been filled in with sediment. So these are literally like depressions in the Earth's crust. So you can think of uh, Michigan as a shallow bowl that has filled in with dirt over time. Now, this is the Michigan Stratigraphic Column. Now the Michigan Stratigraphic Column visually represents the vertical location of rock units within a given area. So we today are going to break these up into one, two, three, four chunks, starting with the Precambrian era. Then we're going to talk about rocks that formed in the Cambrian. And then we're going to talk about rocks that formed in the Silurian. And then we're going to talk about our Pennsylvanian and Mississippian rocks. It's actually the other way around, but we'll keep moving. And then last but not least, we'll talk about the Jurassic red, uh, red bed sandstones, um, which there's actually some dispute there on whether they are Jurassic in age or some studies have actually suggested that they belong to the Pennsylvania in age. Um, and then what sits on top of that is unconsolidated glacial till. So what that means is that glaciers have messed it up very bad and it's all just a bunch of rocks on the surface um, and you really can't infer a lot. A lot of these rocks came during the, the ice ages through the Cenozoic and that also actually will be a whole other video that I'd like to talk about because Michigan, as we know it, has been shaped greatly by its glaciers, so stay tuned for that. The first stop in our layer of Michigan rocks is going to be the basement, which is made of Precambrian igneous rock. Um, we're really actually not going to talk too much about this in this video, because it deserves a whole other video. There's a cool failed rift that happened here, and you can see it a lot up in the Upper Peninsula here, and in parts of Wisconsin but it actually extends through the Lower Peninsula as well. Like I said, this is served its own video, so let's move on. All right, so first we have, let's go actually, let's give the Cambrian blue. We are in the Cambrian. Oh. Cambria, Cambrian. So, when you think about the Cambrian in Michigan, um, think about a shallow sea that spread across Paleozoic North America. And in Michigan in particular, there's tons of little critters and stuff that lived around there, called it home. It was a warm, shallow, tropical to subtropical sea, the perfect spot for carbonate rocks to form. And as you can see here, um, there is a silicic clastic basement, which is usually eroded clastic stuff, so continental. And then there was a deepening, uh, sm uh, shallow deepening, to where animals could live and die and create beautiful limestones and carbonates. So if you wanted to use your imagination and maybe try to see what the Cambrian looked like in Michigan, I would look to the classic illustration of a Cambrian menagerie of animals. You've got trilobites, you have the anomalocaris, you have the weird snappy nose things, and as, long, as well as uh, many other corals too. This next section is separated by the Owl Creek Noxon conformity from the rest of, from the Cambrian rocks. And as you can see here, it starts off also with a carbonate base layer. So you, you can infer from that that there was a shallow sea here, but as you can see, it gets a little bit more complex. So there had to have been a change in sea level and maybe possibly desert-like conditions 
um, that cause hypersaline lakes, think of like the Great Salt Lake or other evaporate deposits out west. Well, the same thing was happening here in Michigan during this time. So where these brackish and um, hypersaline environments created evaporites like salt and gypsum, and this has become great for natural gas, great for salt industry, and Michigan's economy in general. So we owe a lot of our thanks to the Silurian. Now, what do you picture when you think of the Silurian? Um, well, in Michigan, you can go ahead and think of uh, a, like a shallow sea type environment like in the Cambrian with a bunch of shelled creatures, crinoids, gastropods, uh, trilobites are coming, maybe coming to an end here. I don't think they survived the Permian. But towards the end, these conditions wouldn't be so tropical and paradise-like. It would actually, like I said, be hypersalian, and you would see less and less life as you moved up in this part of the stratigraphic column. Next up in the Michigan Basin layer cake, we have, what color should we give? We have blue, we have green. I'll probably misuse green. Let's use this highlighted one for the Carboniferous in Europe. This is uh, the longest one. And look, you can't even see me. For our next stop, we have the Mississippian and Pennsylvanian. Okay, so talking about these rocks, as you can see, they look a little bit different. In the color key here, they describe the blue rocks as carbonates, these grayish green rocks as mudstone, yellow rocks as sandstones, and one, two, three, okay, that's what, and the pink ones are evaporites. So as you can see here, we have a, a shallowing event where the ocean is um, not as deep as it once was. You start uh, getting evaporites and above those evaporites you start seeing shale. So shale is going to be formed in tidal fly areas, in swampy areas where there's going to be lots of life and vegetation, um, possibly tidal flats. So if you wanted to think of what Michigan Basin might have looked like during these times, go ahead and Think about this is a nice mangrove forest uh, of the Carboniferous period, so it might not be as heavily as wooded in the tidal flats, but you could expect there to be it to be pretty rich in uh, life. Um, of course, up until this area right here, this line I'm going to draw, because that's it. That's pretty much where. The Michigan Basin ends as far as rock layers go. Um, there is one more, but it's a little bit more complicated and we'll go over it next. Next stop, we have the Ionian Formation. This is actually a very poorly expressed layer and um, analyses of the pollen has given mixed results. Um, some people seem to think that it belongs to the Jurassic but other people have argued that it actually belongs to the Pennsylvanian and that it's not Jurassic at all. So that's actually still up for debate and more research is needed. I'm going to circle that. More research is needed. So at this line, um, in between this line and the last line we went over, what is the Permian? And it was the Permian and Triassic. Now what happened here in Michigan at this time? Um, well, your guess is actually kind of as good as mine because the rocks don't exist. Um, they have either been eroded away or there is no deposition. There is one thing that I actually want to go back and show you that might have caused this was this little number right here, the Allegheny Orogeny which actually would have caused uplift in the area at the time. Um, so 
because it was a mountain building event. It was the Appalachians. So after that, there was some small deposition. Um, it could have been larger. It's been eroded away. It's, uh, it's very hard to tell from what the data we have, what actually happened here. What happened since then? We are sitting on top of what is called glacial till. So it's basically stuff that big continental glaciers have moved from one spot to another, covering all the layers that we have talked about earlier today. And we owe a lot of things to the glaciers. They're very important, especially when it comes to water. <laughs> There's no denying that Michigan is crazy about its Great Lakes. So for this, we're actually going to have to do another video for it too, unfortunately. So we're going to end this where we left off, or sorry, we are going to end this where we began with the igneous rocks. Both the beginning and end of the Michigan Basin deserve their own, their own video, their own story. Um, there's a lot that happened there. So, catch that video coming soon. So after all that, I'm a little smitten to be living in the mitten. There's actually a lot of geology that goes on here, or that went on here, that kind of goes unnoticed as far as the public goes. I mean, normally when normal people think about geology, they think about giant crystals, or they think about mountains, and you know, we have had a special past here in Michigan, and it's nice to be reminded of that sometime to go over it. So I hope you enjoyed my video. Um, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Rock Feeds. Um, this was written and directed by myself. I gathered all the scientific resources to report on, and this was filmed at the Central Michigan University Live Board Makerspace in the Park Library, and this is based on my ongoing undergraduate senior thesis research on the characterization of unconformities in the Michigan Basin. And with that, I hope you enjoyed. These are my references. Thank you for watching.